on warm early spring nights, amphibians across Vermont are on the move. Salamanders and frogs migrate in mass from their upland wintering habitat to wetland breeding grounds. Unfortunately, in many areas, these migrations take them across heavily traveled roads, resulting in high mortality rates. In recent years, however, a dedicated group of volunteers has been keeping an eye on the spring weather. When conditions are right, these salamander saviors descend on known crossing sites, both to ensure a safe migration and to learn more about some of Vermont's most delicate and rarest residents. He almost doesn't need any help getting across the road. When conditions are right and countless salamanders and frogs are on the move, biologists call it a big night. It is exciting when you have a big night and the conditions that would lead to a big night would be, let's say, it had been cold for a period of time so that no amphibians had an opportunity to move. And then all of a sudden, a lot of rain, warm temperatures, maybe going up to 50 degrees, you lose the snow cover. And so that's just like opening the floodgates. But these guys are in a hurry uh, because they want to get down and breed as early as possible so that their eggs can hatch and their larvae can develop and get out of those pools before they dry out. So they're racing time. Jim Andrews has been studying Vermont's reptiles and amphibians for more than two decades. To better understand the snakes, turtles, salamanders, and frogs that call the state home, he started the Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas Project, which collects data from a statewide network of volunteers. As a result of this effort, Jim has also documented many road crossings where big night migrations put amphibians at risk. Informal rescue missions provide an opportunity to both help amphibians and educate the public about these shy, fascinating animals. Right on the tips of the toes. The tips You'd the see toe. like a little round, they look like a suction cup. Uh -huh. After a quick orientation, volunteers go to work. With flashlights in hand, everyone carefully searches for amphibians that have ventured onto the roadway. When a frog or salamander is spotted, it's given a gentle hand to the wetland side of the road. I get a kick out of showing people these salamanders. It's, it's such a special thing. and It's not a time that people come out and, and look around and, and, and see the world. And so this is something that you have to get a little uncomfortable to, to enjoy, to, to experience. And I think everybody who comes here um, gets a real kick out of it. Uh, it's, a, it's a new world that they've, they've not experienced before. Oh, there it is. There's the spotted. There we go. All right. That is a salamander. Beautiful. That is beautiful. Here at the Morgan Road Crossing in Salisbury, volunteers usually find spotted salamanders, blue spotted salamanders, spring peepers, and wood frogs. Morgan Road is also one of a handful of locations where four toed salamanders are found in Vermont. What do we have? Who can tell me what we have? One of the identifying characteristics of the four-toed salamander are black specks on a creamy white belly. I'm a big fan of rarity and uh, the, to be able to come to a place where there are four-toed salamanders in the abundance that we get here. We've, we've had as many as 400 of them crossing in one night and uh, there's no place like that in Vermont. Right here is the, is the place in Vermont for numbers like that. Prime salamander habitat consists of upland forests that adjoin small seasonal wetlands called vernal pools. Vernal pools are shallow depressions that fill with water in the spring but dry out by late summer, which makes them ideal breeding habitat for species that are susceptible to fish predation. As we develop the state, the pieces of undeveloped land get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and they also become separated from other pieces that may be required by that species. So, you know, sometimes we, we don't think a, as much about the fact that the bobcat really needs different habitat to den in and different habitat to feed in, and it needs to move between those different habitat types. And in this case, 
It's the amphibians that we're talking about, and they need to move. Solutions include everything from rerouting local traffic during migrations to installing underpasses for wildlife. This can be costly, so good research data and strong public support are essential for securing funding. People need to, to be introduced to these species first, and then once you're introduced to it and you're aware of it, then you start assigning some value to it. You know, people who know nothing about the species are not likely to be particularly concerned about mortality on roads. But if they have been introduced to it and become aware of it and, and are intrigued by this phenomenon, then I think we can develop a, a base of support which will help us design roadways and retrofit roadways so that they are wildlife friendly. Four blue spotteds. Throughout the evening, volunteers report their findings. On this night, the forecast rain stayed to the north, which made for less than perfect conditions. Still, when the data was tallied, in just one hour, we helped one wood frog, 10 spring peepers, and 37 blue spotted salamanders, 25 four toed salamanders, and three spotted salamanders cross the road safely with only one mortality. These are animals that are absorbing everything through their skin. They are even more the canary in the coal mine than the canary is in the coal mine. They get hit first by any impurities in the atmosphere, and uh, so they're an important sign of, of the health of, of our ecosystems and, and life around us. The spring migration of salamanders and frogs is a fascinating natural phenomenon, one that until recently most people were unaware of. Now spending a night or two wandering around in a cold rain has become a rite of spring for many volunteers, and there's always room for more helping hands. To get involved, just visit the Vermont Reptile and Amphibian Atlas Project website, then dig out your rain gear and enjoy the sights and sounds of a Vermont spring night. Thank you.